Hello and welcome back to another episode of Kintsugi Talks Podcast where today I have an amazing interview that I got to do with Rachel McCants. But before we get into the interview to talk about her resilient faith and how she helps people wake up with a dose of Jesus, I would like to thank the sponsor for today's episode, Anchor FM. Hello, this is your girl Soroya here with Kintsugi Talks Pod. Thank you for joining me for another special interview. Um, Today, as you can see, we have a very special guest. I will let her introduce herself in a minute. But to give a bit of a background for her, she is an author, speaker, and the founder of RL Limited. Am I saying that right? R. Lindsay Unlimited. R. R Lindsay Unlimited, sorry. Um, And... Her um, her foundation, her organization is a very special organization that helps people to really just focus on Jesus in the morning, which is the important thing, helps them to focus on Jesus first thing in the morning and to really just greaten the desire for him. But without further ado, I'll let her just speak more on that. Rachel, thank you for being on my show today. <laughs> Thank you so much for having me. I, it's a pleasure and I am very honored and feel so blessed. I am Rachel McCants, as Shavoya uh, mentioned, an author, speaker, and founder of R. Lindsay Unlimited and the lady that wakes up early, yes, and starts with Jesus. I've been born and raised in Dallas, Texas, and my health was impacted in a, ma- was impacted in a major way in 2016. A growing grade three brain tumor was discovered on my pineal gland. And R. Lindsay Unlimited is a business devoted to encourage, inspire, and challenge ladies to discover and raise their self-worth and standards, not settle and walk in God's will in all aspects of their lives. I published my first book, Ladies As We Love Ourselves, a a six-step program to self-worth. And now Christians hire me to ignite a dose of Jesus because most do not seek him first because they get too busy, too stressed, fall short of accomplishing their goals. And I support them by um, I, with a morning routine to achieve growth in their relationship with Christ and become more productive through a morning routine. But bottom line, it's through his grace. Amazing, amazing. Now, um, I know because of that, um, that medical struggle you had with, um, that you dealt with, that that was like the Kickstarter to you starting all of this. Now, um, I want to ask, did that um, did that try to shaking your faith in any way at all? Because I know that for any other person, that would that would kind of mess them up a little bit in how they see God and their relationship with God. Yes, it did. But at the same time, that is what changed my perspective mm-hmm. of God. And I believe that God had to physically break me to help me and get me on the path that he wanted me to be on. Because before this brain tumor, I was doing the Rachel show. I was doing what Rachel thought she was supposed to do, doing what Rachel wanted to do and how she wanted to do things. And I believe this brain tumor helped me get on the path that I was supposed to be on. Mm, Absolutely. And I feel like it could take things like that. Um, I mean, no one asks for a brain tumor. No one asks for that. But um, I feel like it takes things like that sometimes for God to really like open our eyes and be like, hey, like there's some things you need to change. Like I've been trying to reach out to you for a while. I've been trying to get closer to you for a while. It took me to have to do this, unfortunately, to get that attention from you. Um, Do you find that that is usually the case for most Christians when it's like when it's like God is trying to give them that wake up call that they need to go through something drastic in order to get closer to God? Very much so. And it's so interesting that you placed it that way or phrased it that way, because that is my exact story. I was raised in church all my life. My mom had me in a a Christian private school. I went to church. I was in Awana. I was in vacation Bible school. I went to Christian summer camp. 
but I was doing what Rachel wanted to do until this brain tumor. And actually the week before, literally, I feel like I had a conversation on Saturday with my best friend and told her nothing has happened to me. I don't have a story to tell. And I passed out. So I, and I passed out that Saturday, the next Saturday mm. with the brain tumor and it was discovered. Mm. And I just had told her nothing has ever happened. I don't have a story to share. Mm. Now, um, what made you think that you had, that you didn't have a story to share? That was like, you thought that like, like you growing up in church that you just kind of had like a regular story. Is that why you felt like you didn't have a story to share? Yes, and it was just kind of boring and day to day. Yes, my dad left when I was five. Um, yes, I was working and doing all the things and I was a Zumba, certified Zumba instructor and having fun, but I just, and I had a whole bunch of other little side gigs, but I just didn't think that my life was worth sharing or um, had anything to mention, worth mentioning, should I say. Um, I love that you're bringing this up because literally um, yesterday my pastor had brought this up in his message that he would hear all the time from people or like we would try to encourage people to tell them that as like there's no such thing as like a boring story like there's no such thing as like a as like a um, it's like a story that's like not important to God or a story that doesn't bring glory to God. It could be a story like yours, a story like mine, like God sees all stories as equal because it all brings glory to him at the end of the day. Now for, um, yes. <laughs> now for, um, for people who may feel that way, um, whether they feel like their life doesn't have a lot of importance or like a lot of like important stuff didn't happen in their life or if they feel very like insignificant of themselves, what type of encouragement would you give to those people to tell them that it's like, hey, like your story matters too? Okay. I love this question because it does, and it is in the book as well, ladies, as we love ourselves. One of the steps I believe it is, when I say them in order, I got them, but like just uh, shouting out the title and the number of steps, it doesn't come out just so smoothly. But it is know your strengths and weaknesses. I really think that's uh, step three. Know who you are. Christ made you a specific way. You are unique. There is something that nobody else in this world can do that Christ has has blessed you with, that this is your purpose, that we need you, the world needs you to accomplish. So I want everybody to know that there are specific strengths and weaknesses that we have. And a lot of times, a lot of us, including myself, I've done it, are trying to strengthen our weaknesses. And the best we can get is mediocre at best. Mm. So focus on your strengths because there is something that you are here for and there is something that you are going through that somebody else will need help with or guidance with or encouragement with you are going through whatever you are going through now to help somebody behind you or beside you mm, that's so good so good and i find with that as well that it's like you really strengthen and hone in on who and what your identity is like in Christ. Because I feel like at the end of the day, like when we really just like make that our foundation, then everything else just kind of falls into place. Cause I'm pretty sure for you and for your story that what you had to go through and then you starting this amazing organization that you have, it's strengthening your identity and like knowing what God put in you to be able to feed out to um to other people and i know for a lot of people that are probably listen listening to this they're probably like well i don't know what my identity is like they're probably a bit confused about that part um what would you say was that um was that moment or what it was that helped you shape your identity in christ or like helped you to know that it's like oh this is who i am this is what i'm meant to do yeah, totally. And so that moment, honestly, and this is when it was growing back, was when I was bald twice. Mm. And you look beautiful. 
<laughs> oh, thank you. One of my brothers is a photographer and he was just like, when it was going back, he was like, I got to get you in this moment because by the grace of God, my hair has always really been like this. And so when I was bald twice, my parents were in shock. I was in shock, but that is when I realized how shallow I actually was. Mm. And I needed that experience to regain and reconnect with God on a personal level, really connect with Jesus on a personal level for the first time, because I had never really known him for myself until I was bald twice. Mm. And that is when I had the dream when I was in recovery, I had a, re I had a dream of me in a play and I knew that God wanted me to write plays. And that's when everything started. I was in the middle of writing plays, which I got to get back to, and the book <laughs> came out of nowhere. And then early mornings with the dust of Jesus. But I am, my intention is to get back to those plays this year. Mm, amazing, beautiful. Um, would you mind sharing what some of those plays like are about? Like, if you don't mind. <laughs> oh, no, not at all. I'd love to, thank you for asking. Um, <laughs> Well, they are based on a friendship. It's of three ladies. One represents self-worth. One represents getting standard and getting standards and keeping them. And one represents no settling. Mm. And they're friends and they have a collective story, a collective play, but then each of them have a play. And my mom is saying that I need to have a conclusion play because I have an introduction play. So we'll see where they go. But it's all about self-worth, getting standards and keeping them and not settling. Mm, I love that. I love that. And those are three things that I feel um, a lot of people can definitely work on. I know that I, I could definitely relate to it. And I feel especially for, for women also that, especially during their walk with Christ, that is like they're expectant of a lot of things. And I feel like there's a lot of pressure that is put on women more than men, honestly, when it comes to being Christian. Um, and then they're trying to fulfill all of these like unreasonable like expectations and they're putting these like un they're putting these unconscious limits on themselves and so they un they unwillingly and unknowingly settle for a lot of things um to the everyday woman who goes through struggles like that whether it be with a job with a significant other um ministry they may be in a ministry that's not serving them anything but they're stuck in it because they don't know what else to do what would you say to um to any woman who is in that type of situation well my first step in any and everything if you ask me about anything it's god first ask him he will give it to you. He will tell you exactly what to do. I've also been told that God can't move a stuck target or like a target that's not moving. So God moves a moving target. Mm. So you got to do something, take a step of faith. And one of my favorite lines in, do you know who Andy Minio is? He's a oh, hip hop artist. Love him. Love yes. him. One of his uh, lyrics. I think it's you can't stop me but he says um my god's good but he's not safe so we have to take those risks because god is good he's got you i just want you to know whoever it is like god's got you trust him rest in that he's done it before he will do it again and if you do not have experience for yourself or you're not remembering his resume my pastor says remember God's resume because he has done so much yeah. um, if you're not remembering your personal resume from God or you know what God has done for you in your life see somebody else's use me as an example the Lord you know just being open honest and vulnerable here with y'all the Lord has told me multiple times when I try to question him now in in like even today like when I try to question God he's like what have I done for you do you not remember the brain tumor do you not remember that I completely healed you do you not remember that I never sent a bill to your door. I never received a bill for the brain tumor surgery. I never received a bill for chemo. I never received a bill for radiation. I never received a bill for MRIs. God has taken care of all of my financial issues. And when, um, just thinking about my story, it's just, it really is mind 
blowing. Mm -hmm. And so for me to even question God, like when he asks me that after I ask him something, like I'm almost like, I just immediately like submit and apologize because how could I question him? He has already done so much. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is that that's a very um repetitive occurrence that i i I definitely go through um and it reminds me of the story of job just like kind of like in the end of the story where it's like god comes in the thunder and the lightning and pretty much pretty much puts job in his place that is like are you the one that was there when i made the foundations of the earth were you there when i did this were you there when i did that no like all right then that is like you need to like you need to like remember like who i am um and um that i mean some of us some of us have to go through that moment where it's like god god gotta remind us and i think we always have to be reminded and i think that's always a good thing to remind us that it's like oh like we are just we are all the way down here and god is up there and without god we would even be where we are today where we are today like who we are today like everything is because of because of him amen I love that. And I love that you compared Job. I think I love how you brought Job's story into that. I love that. (laughs) Um, Now, I want to get more into um, your organization and what you do with people to help them wake up with Jesus. Now, um, I think it's a beautiful thing. It's something that I do try to do often. Um, I fail at it a lot um, <laughs> because I need to strengthen my discipline, but that's that's just me. But um, I just want you to go more into it and to explain like how it started and what you do with, um, with people early in the morning to help them get closer to Jesus. Yes, so I uh, am an early riser, have been just about all of my life. But I have not been intentional with what I do with my morning when I get up. And it just came to me that I need to be productive. I need to be intentional to get more things done. And I have a lot of friends who work in corporate or have other jobs where they're working for someone and they're trying to become entrepreneurs and they're having side hustles. They're trying to write books and they're trying to get more things accomplished in their day. And what I tell them is, you gotta wake up earlier like it's just so many statistics so many studies show that waking up earlier help you helps you accomplish more in your day which helps you overall achieve more in your life and you just it does take the discipline but to get to the discipline i believe you got to start with the why and this started because my why the people that were around me needed help and I'm like, yeah, you wake up early, but my number one step in the book and everything that I say is God first. You start with Jesus. Mm-hmm. So I was doing my morning routine and I got a lot of compliments and a lot of questions on what I was doing and how I was doing it and why I was doing it. And uh, the more we talked about it, I started early mornings with a dose of Jesus. My sister is a brilliant namist. I don't know what the proper term for that is, but she names a lot of things. She named a book, she named um, the business, she just names a lot of things. So she came up with the name for the program. Mm -hmm. And so uh, I was just like, that's it. Early mornings with a dose of Jesus, uh, EMDJ. And the program usually lasts for two months. And we wake up at 6 a.m. Central Standard Timing. The goal, I ask for 10 minutes every morning, Monday through Friday, but the goal is five minutes or less. And I give them an encouragement, an affirmation, a verse or verses. A lot of times it's multiple verses. I just can't help myself. I try, but it's multiple verses, but most of the time I try to do one Uh, and then a song for the day. And I tell them, have a productive day in Jesus's name. And I also do morning routines for people separate from early mornings with the dose of Jesus. And I love that you are that you are really honing in on having people not just like that is like it's not just people saying it's like oh like oh like let me just like 
do something now since I have time that is like is people genuinely taking the time to like make it a lifestyle and not just be like oh like I have some time in my schedule that is like it's like it's more genuine it's more thought out it's more um there's another word that I'm looking for (laughs) um is more um intimate and is helping with like growing the relationship with God. And I know that everyone could definitely benefit from it. I have slowly started to become a morning person. Like I find myself naturally waking up at like, I think probably the earliest of waking up now is like probably 7.30, 8 o'clock in the morning. Um, I do like, I will listen to some worship sometimes. I'll read my devotional. I'm doing a devotional currently where it's like reading through the whole Bible. And currently I'm in the book of Leviticus. Um, and, um, it definitely has uh, helped me to be more like calmer, more focused in the morning. And it helps me get, it helps me get, um, the stuff that I need to do throughout the day, um, like more better and more easier because I started off my morning with, uh, Jesus and focusing on him. There is a talk that I do with those scenarios. Mm -hmm. And so I say, what scenario would you like, or what scenario are you most acquainted with? Scenario one, you wake up just in time with your alarm. You don't have anything picked out to wear. Wait, do you have clean clothes to wear? Do you brush your teeth? Do you wash your face? What do you do? Do you get to work on time? Do you eat breakfast? What, you know, or do you wake up with an alarm if you choose and have your quiet time, pick out, have your clothes picked out. Just, uh, you have breakfast, take a shower, wash your face, brush your teeth have your quiet, quiet time, and you're ready to work, get to work on time, and you have a smooth day. Because honestly, I can attest to being the first one at the first part of my life. Yes, I would try to wake up early, and when I would try to start with Jesus, I would go back to sleep. Mm. And then I would be scrambling around trying to get ready for the day and Mm. get my act together. But it's just so much better when I start with Jesus, because if I don't, like you said, my day is kind of crazy and it's really in chaos Mm -hmm. and my attitude matches. Mm -hmm. And something that just came to my mind, um, I live in New York City and we are a city that is known for being on the go, like literally a nickname for New York City is a city that never sleeps. We are always on the go. Like it's very much hustle culture over here. Like no rest, no breaks, like go, go, go. Gotta get this money, all that stuff. And it's a, it's, it's a very, um, it's a very toxic culture. Like nothing about it is healthy at all. Um, to the people who, what doesn't matter where you're from. I just, I'm just bringing up my home state as an example. To the people who have found themselves like kind of unknowingly bound to like that, to that type of way of thinking of just like, you gotta go, 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 go. Like, I don't got time for this. I gotta get money. I gotta do this. I gotta do that. Um, Obviously to put um, Jesus first, but what is like the, what is like the, that one action that they have to do in order for them to like, to break out of that cycle? I'm going to say, ask God. Ask God for exactly what you need and be intentional about it to break from their mindset because as much as we can do it ourselves, we can't. Mm. It's God who does it, but we just ask him for that guidance and that help and find that why. Find that why you want to break from it. Find that why uh, of what you're trying to accomplish and what can help you commit and be disciplined to accomplish your goal or your your why, what you want. Mm-hmm. Very good. Because as you said before, that if you ask God something, He will He will give you an answer. Um, yes. Because at the end of the day, like God does want to help His children. Um, mm-hmm. God doesn't like seeing us struggle in any way, shape, or form. Like we weren't. We weren't created to struggle. We weren't created to be in any type of just situation that brings us struggle or brings us pain. But with the type of world we live in, that just kind of comes to us like kind of naturally as humans. But we serve a God at the end of the day that is a provider. He's he's 
willingly like with his arms open being like hey like i want to give you this and i want to give you this and i want to give you this but you have to put me first um now um to kind of take the the conversation back to how we were talking about um talking about finding like identity in God. There's uh, a lot of people that come to me, either if I meet them in person or if they like ask me questions over the internet, they always come to me um, and ask me questions about like, why is it important to know like of who God says I am versus who other people say I am? because I believe we live in a culture that we are so dependent on what other people say that we literally make that like the, we make that the goal that we have to like reach to of like what other people say. That is like, oh, that's like, oh, like you're so good at this. That is, for example, like, oh, like you're so good at, um, at marketing. And mind you, marketing, may not even be the gift or skill talent or ministry that god even called you to but because you were so honed in on on pleasing man instead of pleasing god you put yourself in a situation that you weren't even meant to be in and i feel like for a lot of people my generation um i'm a millennial 27 i was born in 1994 um yeah um a lot of my generation, I feel like, are dealing with burnout because of that reason. Um, and I want to know if you have the same thoughts um, about that, and would just like for you to share some some solutions that could kind of help better people of our generation deal with that better. Yes. So. Yes, I am a millennial. I say, well, I'm an older millennial. I'm 34. I'll be 35 in August. Um, 87 babies. Woo woo. Um, um, I have gone through the same exact thing. And that is the mindset I am trying to break out of right now. And I have a business coach who's a mindset coach. And she goes over identifying those negative thoughts that you have that other people have put in your head or that you have discussed or created because we create a lot of negative thoughts ourselves Mm -hmm. there is so much negative self-talk that we give ourselves it is ridiculous my individual uh experience and it is in ladies as we love ourselves as well i am a dancer i was trying out this was rachel's plan for dallas mavericks dancers i was trying out for all the dance teams and i was on an aba dance team which was fun um but it wasn't the nba it was aba it's the the association like right the players who are trying to get to the nba i was on there yeah and so um but trying out for Dallas Mavericks dancers or other dance teams, I was always plus size. Even though in most people's eyes, like I am a little person in the dance world, I'm plus size. Oh, wow. I was always too big to be on the dance team because, you know, I've got a little bit of junk in the trunk. Uh, but I, I am a proper size, but you know, I just the junk in the trunk and, and the little shorts and, It just, it was a thing. And so it took a long time for me to break from that and be able to let go and move forward from that and tell myself that I am not fat. And a lot of my friends were telling me that I had body dysmorphia because I was like a little twig, but you know, I didn't see it that way because in the dance world, I was plus size. Mm. And so um, I really have to get over that. And to this day, like I'm telling myself, like, Rachel, just eat a healthy, you know, have a healthy lifestyle. And that is what I focus on and emphasize. And that is why I OD on water. Um, And, you know, I'm a little bit of a fitness fanatic because of that time period. But I do genuinely love working. There's also a term called comparanoia. And that is, you're comparing yourself to somebody so much that that makes you paranoid. And that makes you go nowhere. 
And God created us, again, individually for specific purposes, for his kingdom purposes. And we are here to accomplish those goals that he has for us. Ephesians 2.10, God has created good works for us to do beforehand. He has created this beforehand. And I also want to go to Colossians 3.23 because I say that every morning, work wholeheartedly unto the Lord and not people. No matter what you're doing, you're working unto the Lord because you mentioned something about comparing to people or something in Colossians 3.23 popped in my head. Uh, but yeah, you just, you cannot compare or doubt because God has said who he has called you to be. I believe it's Psalm 134.19 or 34.19, um, wonderfully, fearfully and wonderfully made. Like he created us in the womb. He knew us before we were in the womb. He has specific plans just for you. I love that. And I love that you brought up Ephesians 2.10 because that's my verse for like my, I guess you call it my ministry that I'm doing here with my my <laughs> podcast and everything. Um, because um, it was like years ago. I don't even remember what year it was like 2015 2016 around that time that God had put that verse in my heart and um with my podcast and I have like a um a mental health like awareness page like mainly projected for like the Christian community but it's for people who aren't in the Christian community as well that um to let people know that it's like you were created for a purpose like you were created to do something great, something that you probably would have never thought of, like on this earth, like does it matter? It doesn't matter what your diagnosis is. It doesn't matter what your life story is. It doesn't matter what your childhood was like. Um, and I called it um, Unique Vessel and I called this podcast Kintsugi because it's a, a Japanese like art form. And the philosophy behind it is that there's still brokenness well, there's still beauty in brokenness. And they use like melted gold to like put the pieces back together. That is like, even with the cracks, like it's the gold that makes it beautiful. And I see that as a symbol of how like God is able to put us back together. And like Jesus's blood is like what keeps us like kind of bound in him. And it's just, just a beautiful reminder that it's like our, our weaknesses are really God's strengths. Like he's, he's able to take everything that we have gone through. Like he's, he could take our brokenness, make it into beauty. Um, he can take graves and turn it into gardens. That's a song from Elevation Worship, Graves to Gardens, which I just, my church literally sung that in worship yesterday. And I was just, ah, it was just, I, cause I love that song so much. Um, but yeah, I'm so happy that you brought up that verse and the verse in Colossians too. Colossians is a book that I got to get into more, actually. Um, I think a lot of books in that part of the Bible, I got to get into more. But yeah, I just love that you brought that up. <laughs> and you got, girl, you got so much going through my mind right now. I'm like, I need a, a notepad so I can keep up with my thoughts right now because you got like so <laughs> many verses popping up in my head like Paul and I boast about my weaknesses mm. because that is when I am strong uh you said something else goodness gracious I don't know maybe it'll come back but <laughs> girl you got my brain just a going I love it <laughs> um I actually want to to kind of keep on that the subject of just like strengths and weaknesses and like and knowing like the good work that we can do for God. Because I feel like we can easily kind of take that for granted, kind of. Like there could be like simple things that we go through, like simple stresses in life, or even with like with someone like me, um, I was diagnosed with borderline personality disorder, depression, anxiety. Um, and uh, being, Christian like having like my faith in God like when I did get that diagnosis it did answer a lot of questions for me because I was always wondering why I struggle with my emotions in a certain type of way why I feel emotions so strongly and people would tell me that like, oh like you're an empath like you're like a neurodivergent all that other stuff that I don't 
really believe in that way. Um, but uh, when I finally sat down with like a, a licensed professional, and I say this now, if you feel like you have any mental health issues, please seek a licensed professional. Do not try to self-diagnose yourself. Please don't do that. We have doctors in this world for a reason. <laughs> um, yes. <laughs> but um, it did answer a lot of questions for me. And in the beginning, um, I was very insecure about it because um, the church that I used to go to um, was not very keen on people like seeking medical help for stuff like stuff that's like in your mind because they didn't they didn't really believe in that it was a very they had a very old school very spiritual way of thinking and so me being in that that church culture did discourage me a lot but thankfully now i'm in a church that um they show support with that and i have a christian uh, counselor now um and my my psychiatrist she's also of faith which um which helps as well and that did really shake up my faith and my identity in god a lot because it made me question that as like well why would god put me or have me go through this significant type of situation or have me live with this for however long he wants me to live with this um and I just, I found it hard to see the good, like the light at the end of the tunnel. And I know that sometimes that God doesn't have to give us an answer, which a lot of people may not, may find it hard to believe. A lot of people may not like that I said that, but God does not have to give you an answer for everything. He really doesn't because he is God at the end of the day. Um, for people who have gone through situations where they probably have been asking the same question over and over again. And they have yet to receive an answer. And they're starting to struggle with their faith. What encouragement would you tell them? Well, two more verses popped in my head. I just love talking to you. I think please. you already know that. <laughs> <laughs> please, however many verses pop <laughs> into your head, please, please willingly share it, please. <laughs> Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. I'm gonna. Um, so first, you said it best, Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will make your paths straight. Mm -hmm. So we cannot lean on our own understanding, but we cannot lean on our own understanding because in Isaiah, I don't know the correct specific verses for this but his ways and thoughts are higher than our ways and thoughts and like you said about Job where were we when the ocean was made and when the sky was formed like where were we in that um and what you were talking about for yourself when you were asking why do you have to go through that and why is it me um I feel like this sounds sassy but I've been asked the question, why not you? And also the answer is to help somebody else. It's always to help somebody else. We are created to serve others. That is our main purpose. And I will tell people that if you are looking for your purpose or you are wondering why you were created, it's gonna to have to do with serving somebody else. It is not going to be solely to benefit you. It's gonna be helping somebody else always absolutely like if you look at any person in the bible literally every person that has had their like their story shared in the bible it was never about them it was about it was about like helping the people around them first person that comes to mind for me is esther esther is one of my favorite people in the bible and i relate to her in more ways than one like she was an orphan i myself am an or and was an orphan and i was adopted and her story her being able to like lay down her life for her people because her her uncle Mordecai was like you like you were called for such a time as this like there is no one else that could do this but you because you were put in a position you were put in for a reason and it's like even even the way she got to her position is like it's it's, it's nothing but God like even uh who else uh Joseph um the way like his own brothers sold him into slavery because they were jealous of his dreams 
And a lot of people will get upset at that, but it's like, you have to understand that they didn't have the, the type of calling and anointing that Joseph did. So if you're not on that level with God, you're not going to understand those type of godly things. Because at the end of the day, they didn't understand. They couldn't comprehend. And so then him being put to like pretty much second in command of all of Egypt, because he was able to interpret dreams, that was the gift that God gave him. It put him to the level that he was able to be. And at the end of the story, he was able to help his family, brought his whole family to Egypt, was able to provide for them. And I love like at the end of his story, he says that it's like what you meant for evil, God meant for good. And it was meant to help those that are in need. And I just, yeah, I just, I just think it's, it's a beautiful thing of how God can literally just do a complete 180 on, on someone's story in a very unexpected way, in a very crazy way, in a way that you probably would have never, never, ever, ever (laughs) have thought of. Cause I even like, I'll reread the story of Joseph, the story of Esther. I'll go through David's story every now and then again. And I'll just be like, wow, like God really did that. (laughs) Yes. I love David's story because he was, you know, out tending to the sheep and Samuel was just like, wait a minute. Was it Samuel who anointed him? But whoever went to anoint him or choose. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and he was just like, you know, you have one more son. And Jesse was like, no. Mm-hmm. And he was just, you know, and little David. But um, I do. But it's so interesting that you brought that up because my story goes so much like that. I would not be here today if I didn't go through what I went through in corporate. Mm. And I thought the boss that forced me to leave, she didn't necessarily force me to leave. I was just like, I can't stay here working under this. So I got to go. Um, But if I didn't go through that, I would not be here today. I would not be doing early mornings with a dose of Jesus. I would not have Arlen's Unlimited, which I know it's God's. He is the CEO. I am simply the founder. Uh, This is God's business. It's not mine, but I would not be here if I did not go through what I got, I went through and I was upset the whole time, like uh, back in the day, should I say, before the brain tumor and everything. I just, I didn't understand. And my boss at the time was a Christian and I was like, Lord, how is this benefiting either one of us? And um, I, I just didn't see how it would work. But I will say, like I'm where I am today and me and my old boss, we're now friends and we walk together frequently. <laughs> and so I'm just like, the Lord works in mysterious ways and you just never know. Yeah, you never, you never truly know. Like there's um, countless things that I've been through. I was homeless for two years. Um, unexpectedly got accepted for Section 8 when I thought Section 8 wasn't accepting people no more. Um, I myself went through cancer three times. Mm -hmm. Uh, I had a form of leukemia um, and God healed me of it three times. Amen. And um, I can now say that as like, I'm in the healing process of like a lot of trauma and stuff that I went through in my childhood. And I can say it's because of God, because it wasn't for God opening these doors for like people in my my church, like telling me that I was like, oh, like, you know, there's like Christian counseling, right? Because it's like, I, because it's like for the longest time, it was hard for me to find a therapist that I can relate to, but it wasn't until I found someone of the faith and what helps is that they're a person of color. So I was like, I can relate to them more. So it's like, yeah, I, I, I wouldn't be where I am today. I wouldn't be doing this podcast. I wouldn't have my mental health awareness page. I wouldn't be doing what I'm doing if I didn't go through what I went through. And me saying what I just said, I know that's not easy for a lot of people to say. And a lot of people will probably question that as like, of like the the example that I gave of what I had, of the mindset change that I had to go through, of just like, well, why do I have to go through this? And then you brought up um, the question to counteract that, but it's like, but why not you? Like, why not you? That's like, maybe God chose you 
to take what you're going through currently or what you went through, what you're still struggling with to help people who have been through the same thing. Because at the end of the day, it's not about us. It's never been about us. And that is something that I have to remind myself of constantly, like constantly, constantly, constantly. That is like, it's not about me. It's not about me. This is, this is, it's not my show. <laughs> um, it's like, I'm, I'm not the important one here. That was like, yes, I'm important to God, but it's like, this is more than, this is more than me. This is about people getting their lives changed. This is about like people being healed. This is about people like growing more in their faith. Like it's, it's, it's bigger. It's, it's bigger than just me trying to receive an answer for like a five-year question that I've been asking God. Your organization, R. Lindsay Unlimited, um, mm-hmm. I want you to just kind of, cause like how you said, God is a CEO and you're just, you're just like the, like an employee of God's company. <laughs> um, I want you to go more into detail to that. And I want you to, to just tell the people of why they should want to get involved with it. Because I truly believe that people should get involved in what you're doing. Yeah. So and foremost ooh, that is hard it's a, it's a good and hard question um but to get in well why you should get involved is to grow your relationship with christ and the hardest part in marketing or um presenting my business to people or what i am doing is because people don't think they need it mm. and you know well not you know but you know they you know i know that people really need it. And I am simply a vessel that God is using because he came up with this all on his own. And I have a talk that I do that hindsight is 2020, just my story. And just looking back over my life and before our Lindsay Unlimited, before the tumor, before all of that, in the position after leaving the corporate job with my boss who was um, mean to me and I was just like, I can't stay here. Uh, When I went to the next company that I was working for and I was running a business and I didn't pay enough attention. It was a showroom in the company that I worked for. They start all of their stores in a showroom and they basically give it to you. So as a showroom manager, I'm like running this store. But I love this company because they make you write down what you want. They make you write down the visions that you're having. So I wrote down Arlen's Unlimited way before the brain tumor was discovered, way before anything was going on. And I didn't even know. When I go back and read those vision statements, my mind is like blown. So I say all of that to say that you should get involved because you do need God. You need to be aware of his presence in your life. You need to see how he has blessed you and how he continuously blesses you. I love what you said because you said he wants to bless you and he does. I have the Tony Evans commentary and study Bible. And in his commentary, he talks about how much God wants to bless us and that he is just waiting for us to basically get in line with what he has for us. He still blesses us when we're outside of his will, but to get that abundance of blessings that he wants to give, we need to be in line with him. And I believe that starts with starting with him every day as it says in first thessalonians 5 17 to pray without ceasing we're supposed to be talking to him all day long there is an author caroline leaf i know yes her. yeah dr lee oh you know her personally or you just know who she is oh i i just know who she is i wish i knew her personally i oh, okay. i just know i just know her for her writing <laughs> Oh, yes, yes, yes. I need to read her books. I She came to, I attend Oak Cliff Bible Fellowship, Tony Evans Church, mm-hmm. and she came to one of our vacation Bible schools. And I have bought all her books. I purchased all, purchased all of her books. I have yet to read them, but I remember her talks when she was there. And she was saying that we have, I think it's like either 10 or 20 seconds. We can contact God every 10 or 20 seconds. And we need to be taking advantage of that. He is our connection. The Holy Spirit is our guidance 
for any and everything. And we need to start our days with him if we want to see him through them. If you don't do your devotion at night, I do, I mean, in the morning, I do suggest at night because that will carry you into your next day. But there is just something for me that starts in the morning. And I really believe you need to bookend it. And I'm really trying to figure out how, how to do that for people to help them to start with Jesus and end with Jesus because I keep getting the suggestion of, will you help me go to sleep and, you know, in my day with Jesus, because I think that is a need too, because I believe in praying before going to bed. But to get involved, you can just reach out to me any way you'd like to. Um, you can email me, you can go to the website and contact me. You can do Instagram or Facebook, LinkedIn. And uh, I just really think everybody should be involved because waking up early and starting with Jesus is a must. And the other side of the business, the self-worth side, I do do self-worth courses with ladies as we love ourselves. And even though it says ladies, men, are very drawn to this book as well I hear both of my brothers have told me this is not a gender specific book and a lot of my friends husbands read the book the guy I am dating right now read the book and he was like this is good and so men really are liking the book so you know don't be shy to join even though it says ladies as we love ourselves I love that. I definitely love that. And I love the fact that even though like the title of it is ladies, like the men have drawn themselves to it too. Um, because every, every everyone needs Jesus, men and women, we, we all need Jesus. It's not just gender specific um, because God, God isn't gender specific. He loves men and women. He loves all of us. Um, but again, I just love everything that you're doing with your organization because there's not a lot of people out here that is like, well, there's people out here that will say that's like, oh, like you need to, you need to start your day with, day with Jesus. You need to get up and pray and pray to God. But it's like, what you do is like, you're teaching people how to do it. Like you're not just saying it, you're saying it and then teaching people how to do it. Cause there's not a lot of people out here who will take the time to show people how to do something. Cause I feel like that's sometimes missing with like when, when preachers say certain things, cause they'll say that it's like, you have to do this, but then they won't take the time to break down of like what that looks like. And so I feel like with what you're doing, that is like, you're really helping people show like what it looks like. And of everything you said, that is like, it's, it's, it seems very simple. That is like 10, 15 minutes of your time in the morning that you 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 meditate on a scripture you listen to a worship song you really just hone in on the holy spirit it's very simple because when it comes to god a lot of things are just very simple we make it complicated <laughs> we as humans make it complicated but god really has laid everything out for it to be very simple and i just love that what you're doing it helps it helps people just just hone in on that and i for everyone watching this the links will be below of like everything that you can like everything that she does her book uh, where you can contact her but it's like, i highly recommend going to her to start your morning with jesus and hopefully in the near future you do like the night version as well because i know i i personally know a lot of people who could benefit from the night version because they're good in the morning but it's the night that that they struggle with <laughs> and a good bedtime i have a lot of people who struggle with the bedtime mm -hmm. at night so they can get up earlier in the morning and so mm -hmm. yeah i'm working on it I, i'm praying about it we shall see i'm glad i have your support that makes me a little bit more motivated for it <laughs> absolutely absolutely um i just got one more thing on instagram yeah. if when y'all do follow me I do do Instagram, well, and Facebook, so I record it on Instagram, and then I put it on Facebook as well in my stories. Mm -hmm. I have encouragement every morning, Monday through Friday, of uh, something different. I have a, a title for each day, like today, because I said motivated, it reminded me. It's Motivational Monday, and we got Transformational Tuesday, Worthy Wednesday, Friday Junior, which is Thursday, which is really thankful Thursday, and uh, Friday. So, you know, 
if you just need some simple encouragement, those stories go really quick. I really believe in like quickness. I know that everybody is busy and everybody's trying to get somewhere and do something. And you mentioned, you know, um, being hard to wake up at seven or something. Just so you know, EMDJ, it's 6 a.m. Central Standard Timing, but it's 7 a.m. your timing. And so, you know, anybody who else is in the uh, Washington, D.C. and New York area, um, that's, you know, I've had a Virginia in before as well. She would get up at seven and, you know, I would say, you know, it's 6 a.m. Well, you know, for us in Dallas, but you know, in Virginia, it's seven. But, yeah. Yes, I love that. I love that. Um, one last question to just kind of bring this to a close. To uh, the people who are listening, to people who are watching this, what is, what is like just one bit of motivation, one bit of like of an, of an encouraging word, whatever it is that's on your heart that you would want to leave them with? My encouraging word is a few of them. And you, <laughs> you did not ask for this, but one of my friends, she is a pastor's wife. And so I was like, did pastor have a word this Sunday? And she said, yes, Rachel, one word. Okay, but my word or encouragement to people is or are, um, you got this because God's got you. I love that. I love that. And I hope that for everyone listening and everyone that has taken the time to listen, taken the time to watch that, <clears throat> Like Rachel said, um, that you got this because God's got you. You got this because God put you in a position that you are in for a specific reason, for a specific purpose. And there is nothing that can shake that because God put that calling on you before you were even thought of, before you even put into existence. Yes. Yes. Something else. Because you were saying it so beautifully. I just have to <laughs> add your Esther line. Well, Mordecai's line. Yes. You were created for such a time as this. Yes. Absolutely. Yes. <laughs> Thank you, Rachel, for your time. Thank you for this lovely conversation that I was able to have with you. Um, just like the first time we talked, it's like, it's, I just love the, the back and forth that we had. Um, I know you brought it up before, but where can people find you? Where can people connect with you? Like, I'll obviously leave all the links below, but where can people find you? Where can they connect with you? And thank you for having me. It is such a joy to be here today and talk with you. Like you said, like we did before, we have some, such a good flow and back and forth. Love it. <laughs> um, people can contact me and find me on the website, www.rlindsay. And Lindsay is A-Y. So that's R Lindsay, L-I-N-D-S-A-Y, unlimited.com. And the Gmail, email is rlindsayunlimited at gmail.com and instagram and facebook are lindsay unlimited or just look up rachel mccants and that's what it is on linkedin as well rachel mccants all right you heard her go follow her connect with her do all the things you want to wake up early with jesus you go follow her i need i need to do that for myself honestly i i i, I really do i is not like I need to I need to get better with it but yes that is it for today's episode of Kintsugi Talks thank you for those who listen thank you for those who watch and if you did both thank you um you can continue to listen to Kintsugi Talks on Anchor Apple Podcasts Spotify Google Podcasts and Reason which is the newest platform that this podcast is on and again all of the links for Rachel will be down below all my links will be down below and until then God bless Thank you.